Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers, where two and a half Pro Tools experts and Avid instructors discuss, demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. I'm your host Dave Phillips, uh, lecturer for Point Blank in the UK. And on this week's episode, we're talking uh, about a question from Roger, who asks the following. Now this is a long one, guys. You get, a, uh, get comfy. Hi, can you tell me how I can change volume of multiple sends? Thanks. Boy, that was a, a long one. That was tremendously verbose. I, this actually, is, I love I, that I, question. <clears throat> I forgot I mean, the question was so long. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a great question. It's a really good question. Uh, because, because there are multiple answers to that depending on your situation, right? That's right. It's perfect for us. Yeah. Yep, indeed. Uh, so today we're talking about groups. Um, in today's episode, we'll go through the basics of groups and we'll cover Roger's answer in, in a kind of roundabout way and next week we'll go into a lot more depth on one of what I think to be anyway one of Pro Tools most significant features um, and by my side doing the thing as usual and doing their best to make sure that we stay focused and succinctly on topic back from his secret mission in the Middle East uh, Anders Motz from Tonkraftwerk in Austria hello yep and Avid's audio training manager for the entirety of Asia Mr Andy Hagerman Curriculum manager for the entirety of the planet. Oh, you've been promoted. No, that's nope. been the that's title. By, my job every, for every yeah. Yep. Well, uh, well, okay. <laughs> Forgive me. We've only been doing this a year. <laughs> what, what I've did only... you say, Andy, did you just say uh, for the entirety of mankind, or what? What did you say? Like, for the for the benefit of all mankind. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming that there are no Pro Tools students on the space station, so I'll take either. <laughs> But, but you know what they probably are. We, we, well, what, yeah. Well, do you know if if you're if you're watching Pro Tools answers from up in space and you are producing on your off time, drop a comment. Let us know. Let us know. <laughs> that would make my day. <laughs> what did you okay. say about what did you say about <laughs> keeping us succinct and on the point? Yeah, we're failing already. <laughs> Okay, let's jump quickly into uh, into our subject then and talk about groups. As I said, I think groups are one of the most important things that Pro Tools gives us. It's the ability to link uh, channels together and, and, and have multiple channels basically act as if they're one thing. So if you are editing you can have multiple clips react to the editing that you're working on and if you're mixing you can group the faders together so that when you move one fader all of those faders move in concert um, and it's particularly important when you're working on something like drums particularly something like drums uh, where you're needing to keep all of the the tracks face coherent um, and if I just share my screen um, what Roger wanted to do was we've got a bunch of sends here and um, that are uh, being sent to a drum reverb bus um, including the kick so we should get rid of that one because otherwise no, we'll get I mean, flamed that's, I always use a lot of reverbs <coughs> and kicks you can, you can always mute it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so what what Roger was was wanting to do is he's got a whole bunch of sends set up to send reverb to a bus I we assume and he wanted to be able to just move one and then all of those follow that movement and groups as I was saying in last week's episode is is one of my favorite things of Pro Tools and arguably one of the most important things to do uh, is is grouping a bunch of tracks together so that what you do to one uh, will happen to all of the others as well and in the context of mixing um, once you've got a blend of tracks together uh, and drums particularly important I think um, once you've got a blend of them together you want to be able to keep that blend together when you're moving one fader and all of them will follow. And similar with editing, it's particularly important with drums to keep everything phase coherent so you're not moving all of the individual tracks uh, around for the purposes of editing um, and breaking the phase coherency between each of those. So being able to move everything together as one instrument 
uh, or as one clip rather, is particularly important for keeping all of that stuff together. So in this episode, we'll go through what groups are, how to create groups, how, how we can modify groups. Um, we're going to be linking a couple of uh, parameters, uh, sends obviously being the, the predominant one, uh, and we're going to possibly look at a couple of shortcuts um, for, for bossing groups as well. Um, so you might have noticed earlier on I linked a couple of uh, tracks very quickly. So we're just going to talk about how we can link groups. So uh, I have all of my drum tracks here. In fact, let's just move that drum verb out of the way because I've got all of my drum tracks here that are part of my drum recording and I want to be able to link those so that whatever I do to one happens to all of the others. So I'm going to just highlight kick, hold down shift, and make a range selection by clicking on the snare bottom one, which for some reason is all the way over on the right. And I'm going to hold down command G on a Mac, which would be what on a PC? Control, Control G. Because I'm not very good with my Windows things. And I'm going to call this drums. And for very good reasons, I'm going to make the the group ID the letter D. And just check that all of the tracks that I've selected are currently in the group. If there was one that I'd missed, I can always add one in. And if there's one that I added by accident, I can always click remove it. I'm going to click OK. And that has created a group in my groups menu down here. And now whatever I do to my the one fader uh, will happen to all of the others and the same thing on my edit window. Now, the reason why it it links on the edit window and in the in the mix window is because when when Dave created the group, he created a mix and edit group, which is which is something time sometimes we do this a little bit without thinking it's just our I don't know anybody who who doesn't use that as a default but it is worth noting that you can have a group that is in the mix window but not in the edit window mm -hmm. and and vice versa mm -hmm. yeah in, indeed and it just means that if, <coughs> if it's a mixed group um all of your faders are linked but you are able to edit independently right and if you're in if you create an edit group you could you edit together but you can mix independently that's right hmm and you just changed Fantastic. that to just an edit group, just so you know, Dave. Did I really? Yeah. Uh, I really you I'm... mistakenly did uh, the letter A as well. <laughs> not sure <laughs> what happened there. <laughs> well, okay. Well, in case uh, there's some things that I can modify, so oh, I can no, right click sorry, on dude. my group. I can right click on my group. Um, no, I didn't. Uh, no, I thought I thought I thought I thought you no. hit okay. But but so, by so the way, but, that, but you right. can't change, change the, the ID. Package. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's you can change everything else. So, so in case, uh, so in that case, then let's delete that group. <laughs> you did this on purpose to show the workflow, right? Yeah. Mm. So many times. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah. Awesome stuff. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, let's get to uh, the. The stuff that that we wanted or that we set out to do here mm -hmm. which is about linking the sends of the group members so if you look into your group again uh, if you go in and modify that group so if you look in the attributes which is what are being set to to the group yep. but in in dave's case he's following something called globals That's which right. is like one setting that you can do that applies to multiple groups and if you mm -hmm. want to change the settings of all of those groups that follow the globals, you can simply change the globals, which will change the the, the settings for all of the groups that are currently fo following globals, which is a great thing. But let's do, let's don't do globals, let's do just attributes for Dave's drum group, which mm -hmm. is his only group as well. So as we can see now in the attributes tab here in the modify groups uh, dialog is that currently his group have only got their volume, mutes, solos, and automation mode linked. Everything else is unlinked in the, in the group. And for, for this particular question, uh, there was, uh, uh, the question was, how can I, how can I uh, move multiple sends at the same time? And if you look at Dave's session here, uh, you can see that 
he is only using his A send, the send A selector. So mm -hmm. we will change or make sure that the attribute is set to send A level control. Mm -hmm. If there is, if he wanted to move the pans or mutes or, or of those sends, he could do that. And LFE is also a feature that is an ultimate feature, of course. So in this case, uh, this will basically take care of the problem. And if you hit OK now, and if you move one send of these, all of them will be grouped. Just to show you uh, that that the other ones aren't grouped, can you can you insert a, a send on on the B? Maybe sends B. Oh, uh, of course, yes. Okay, yeah. so I'll I'll just do the same tracks. Yep. Just create a new send. Just to show you that these are not grouped right now because that's what we set in the attributes. So these are grouped and these are ungrouped, as you see. Mm -hmm. By the way, if you wanted to group all your sends, it's, it's easily enough done by holding down the option key on a Mac or the alt key on a Windows machine. Um, and it'll yeah, just let's, goes let's down. Show you. Yep. Show yeah, that. maybe Dave, you can show that. So what am I doing? Sorry. So open up the uh, uh, edit groups window again. Modif modify modify groups. groups. Sorry. Oh, modify groups. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and go ahead and hold down the option key mm -hmm. and click on send B. And it basically, and by the way, that's true for any of the columns. So if you wanted to, uh, you, you can group inserts, which we're not going to talk about today, but you can group, um, you know, mutes, pans, LFEs, holding down option will just select everything all the way down that column. Great stuff. So click OK and then there we go some lovely linking stuff i i love the linking feature of pro tools um and and actually andy you you just said that we're not necessarily going to go into linking inserts but there is one thing that i would like to show with linking inserts sure. and and you you mentioned it earlier on uh, just off camera uh, as, as a a kind of important limitation to this so if i just link those two overhead groups overhead tracks specifically to a different group now, yeah, okay. To a different group. Um, and, oh, actually, I should have gone in to do my attributes first, shouldn't I? Because I want to just link the controls um, and the bypass, because I think that's important, um, of insert A. And I'm going to insert a copy of PSP Neon Mix on that. And in fact, I should have done my tools selected on both of them which is silly so I've got the two plugins open there and because I've linked the attributes for insert a whatever I do to one plugin will now be copied over to the other and for if you're recording something like overheads um, on two separate tracks obviously you know you can record them on a stereo track <coughs> Um, but you know we still got a stereo recording just represented on two mono tracks you may be wanting to process them the same way you, it's a great way of being able to process them as if you're working on a stereo track and it makes things very very uh, quick and very easy uh, but also the linking of the bypass one is important because you know you want to audition your your EQ settings um, or compression settings to make sure you're having a positive effect um, and not wrecking your audio so being able to bypass the, uh, one of them and have the other one follow um, I think is is particularly important now one thing is and I think this is probably where you're going to go Dave sorry um, is if you're going to link controls, they have to be not only the same kind of plugin, they have to be the same plugin. So in other words, you same can, plugin. if you have two different EQs, they, they both may have low pass filters, but if they're not the same plugin, they won't link. Um, but if you bypass it, I believe that will be linked. Nope. <clears throat> No, the bypass no. is a so, link. So, so even, to, even, it has to be the same plugin. Yeah, so it has to be for for both of those things. So, for um, both of those, yeah. you know, that's my one of my go tos um, for for insert A is of all things channel strip because it's so good with its low pass and high pass filters. Um, and I just put that on A for almost everything that I do because it's it's so good at you know kind of cutting the fat off of of anything and grouping those together and having. Um, at least bypass. Um, usually, usually I do only group the bypass because I want to be able to obviously change their their uh, their states um, independently. Mm -hmm. But um, it's it's super super useful. 
Yeah, I love the channel strip. Yeah. No, it's it's such a it's such an unsung hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the secret weapon in Pro Tools. It's, that it's so good. Really it's so good. <laughs> um, can can I show something? I I I want to I want to show a workflow that I do that's a little bit different from the not following Global's workflow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, sure. So so. Um, Dave, let me let me drive and and if I can show your screen since everybody kind of knows the layout of it. Okay. <clears throat> so there we go. so so right now we've got um we've got two groups right, um and if you go in to modify just the drums group, um let's let's this is a different it's it's a by the way what what has 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 been done here by not following the globals completely usable do it all the time and and the workflow that i'm going to show you is not an either or workflow it's a both and workflow so so what i'm going to do i do in addition to things like this but um let's do this follow globals now if it's following globals then the settings that are in the globals tab will be followed by every group that is following globals which is, which by the way, in, in most cases or, or in many people's cases are most of your groups, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is, I think this is the unsung hero of this tab is any change that you make in this window will change the performance and, and the behavior of all the groups that are following the globals. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. So let's do this. Um, let's let's say I want my volumes, mutes, solos. Um, so go down to the to the mixed attributes, solos, automation mode, great. Now, um, hit the save button. And we'll save that in position number one. Great. Um, turn off volume, turn off mute. Um, turn off solos and automation modes and hold down the option key and choose sends. Now ch save that in position number two. I thought this is where you might be going. And what what this does is now by changing one button, you've changed your whole board and all your groups, the groups stay the same. So your drums group are still dealing with the drums tracks. It's just dealing with a different part of your drums tracks. Does that make sense? And and you can just change them by just clicking that button and basically you basically flip what the group is controlling and what, what is being controlled and more importantly what's not being controlled. Um and so very often when I'm when I'm getting my levels right, I'll use, you know, your standard, you know, volume and mutes. But when I'm doing things like, you know, reverbs and sends and sometimes cue mixes and stuff like that, I'll change it and it changes the whole schmear. And I don't have to create a new group that's just a, a, a kind mm -hmm. of a, a boutique kind of thing. I change the whole thing, and I can change it back. And and it and there's nothing wrong with that. It's not like it's not like things that were grouped stop working. It's right, right. just you're just changing the focus of of that feature. And yeah. it's only going to change uh, change the behavior of the group from that point on until you change it back. Until you change it back. Yeah. So so yeah, I and I'll, really I I do this all the time and. When I show people this, the, the first question obviously is, when did they add that to Pro Tools? And I, I had hair like Anders when they had this in Pro Tools, and people just don't they don't know. Um, but that that's like the, the the most asked questions during groups oh, with professionals. Completely, like I can go through one hundred and one the Pro Tools one hundred and one book, and they'd be like, "Since when is that in Pro Tools?" <laughs> I've I've actually gotten to the point where I start lying to make them feel better. It's like, when? Did, oh my god, this is great! I can't believe I didn't know that. When did they add that? Just came out last week. Yeah. That way they don't feel. That way they don't feel like they've missed out. That's great. <laughs> yeah. So can we talk about and uh, so we talked about uh, groups. We talked about linking. We've talked about modifying and deleting. We've ended up having to do that quite a long time. Mm -hmm. um, for the last part of the episode, what about some cool shortcuts? For working with groups number one shortcut hold down the control key and move any one fader 
and it will basically clutch the group. So the control key on a, on a Mac, and it's the start key on a Windows machine, will allow you to suspend groups for as long as you hold down that key. And that's, this is, yes, you know, okay, so so you're, you're working with this, and I see a lot of people will, will turn off the group and then just move one fader and they turn it back on again. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. So just hold down the control key. And for as long as you're holding down the control key, anything that you do will be independent of the group. The group is basically clutched off. And that's super, super useful. Right yeah. uh, right, right. click on the mouse is also... That, that's right click on the mouse does the same thing. Yeah, uh, another great thing is if, if your groups are um, enabled or disabled, they are now enabled. You can see them being gray in the groups list. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter. You can use the, the little... Uh, you, you can use uh, the groups list to to show and hide groups, um, or sorry, to show on and hide the members of your group. So is it is it command clicking on them? Control. Or is control clicking? Oh, so by control clicking on the drums group, you're only showing the members of that group. Yep. If you uh, control click on the OH group, you're only showing the members of that group. Okay. And if we, when you want to get back and see all of them, use the all group. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll do you I'll do you one further. Um, yeah, go ahead. Just go ahead and create a new group of those two guitar tracks, of the two. Uh, sorry, two synth tracks. Great, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Muzzle. Great. <laughs> Hold down the control key. Click on drums. Mm -hmm. Shows only drums. Shows drums. Hold mm -hmm. down the control key and click on synth. Shows only synths. Uh huh. Great. Hold down shift control and click on drums and it will add the drums without removing the synths. Very cool. Right? Does that does it require them to be active? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. And then of course, as as you said before, the all group is gonna show basically show all the tracks, and the all group is always always includes all the tracks, so it's nothing you have to maintain. Mm. Yeah. Great. Very, very cool. There's some unique ones in there. I love those. <laughs> oh yeah, they're great. Great. And it's and, okay. and, and Dave, you, you, you said it. It's, it's a it's a power, power powerful, powerful feature, you know, what you can do with groups. Um and you know, it has been around for a long time, but it doesn't mean that people, you know, know it and use it. So practice it, uh, get around it, get comfortable with it because once you once you get over that discomfort, you're gonna find that you're gonna use these workflows all the time yeah awesome stuff right we'll put a pin in that there then uh we we could end up going a lot further into groups we might save that for oh you want to let's do it okay uh, <laughs> well no no no, 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 no. you're supposed to be groups? here to keep us succinct and focused andy <laughs> boy did you cast that one wrong <laughs> uh, all that leaves me to say then is thank you very much to anders thank you and thank you to andy you bet we will see you on the next one. My name's Dave. This is Pro Tools Answers, and we're out.